why Attorney General Malami cannot break strong bond between the Igbo and the Yoruba or Hanezindibu slams Buhari's minister. Welcome to the news and thank you for tuning in to listen. The Attorney General of the Federation on Friday made many allegations against Khan while addressing a press conference. Now the news in detail. An Igbo social cultural group Ohane Zendibu has slammed the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, for blaming the leader of the indigenous people of Yafra Ipop, Namde Kano, for all the killings and destruction that happened during the end SARS protests last year and the ones happening presently in the southeast. The AGF on Friday made many allegations against Kano while addressing a press conference. Malami alleged that Kanu has been working against the Nigerian nation based on its actions and speech, and that he instigated others to attack public properties, security agents, civilians, and any other perceived enemies using Radio Biafra as a major means of communication. Ohane Zendibo, in his reaction, said it was disappointing that the Attorney General descended to the level of total ignorance. The group accused Kanu of shopping for offenses just to nail the secessionist leader. Ohaneze urged him to try to be above board as the nation's chief lawmaker. Its National Publicity Secretary Chief Alex Chirozie Obonia said, One would think that a senior advocate of Nigeria, San, and the Attorney General of the Federation, the chief law officer of the Federation, should be above board. It is therefore advised that Malami should not be so cheap for the uninitiated to discover his shenanigans. In other words, the above remarks by the Attorney General of the Federation are very inelegant, imprudent, malicious, treacherous, and fallacious. Malami should know that the internet world has left him behind. All his game plans are crude and anachronistic. Malami's sinister motive of heaping all criminalities in Nigeria on IPOP or the Igbo, including the crimes where arrests have been made and the known culprits already arraigned, is most unethical, unprofessional, and unbenefiting of his office. Some other crimes that Malami ascribes to IPOP are still under investigation and arrests so far made are not linked to IPOP. The Malami preservations are very strange to law and indeed a new dimension in the Nigerian justice delivery system. Malami's card is to paint the southeast of Nigeria as a terrorist zone, to prepare a ground for the use of a newly acquired American Super Tucano fighter jet in the zone. Malami should be reminded that the very condition for the sale and release of a jet to Nigeria by the USA is that they will be used strictly to fight the Boko Haram terrorists in the northeast and incessant banditry in the northwest. Furthermore, Malami is playing God by believing that 2023 is the end of the world and is plotting hard against the Igbo interest. Unfortunately, Malami has crossed the red line. Ohane Zendi will call on the Nigerian Bar Association MBA to re examine Malami in a bid to establish, establish his suitability and competence for the elevated office he occupies. It further said Ohane Zendi will still believes that all these grandstandings and hyperboles by the federal government about the Igbo or IPOB are machinations in self denial. The solution to the crisis in Nigeria lies in justice and dialogue. If the federal government can encourage dialogue with the notorious bandits, Boko Haram and Fulani Hutsmen, it is therefore expected that what is good for the goose is Mutatis Mutandis good for the Ganda. That the IPO vandalized and looted the palace of the Oba of Lagos and burnt over 150 house buses. At the Lagos bus terminal, we are mere ethnic cut, simply intended to play up the Yoruba against the Igbo. It is important for Malami to know what the, that the bond between the Yoruba and the Igbo is strong, inseparable and beyond his marrow machinations. Malami should know that the Yoruba did not spill the Igbo blood and vice versa. The likes of Kono Adekunle Fajuyi, who chose the Supreme Prize instead of betraying an Igbo in the person of General Johnson Thomas 
Umun Nakwe Agonyi Runsi have replicated against the board in millions. Perhaps Malami does not know the historic role played by the current Oba of Lagos as a police officer for the return from exile of Dim Chukwe Buka, Chukwe Mecca, Odumebu Ojuku, the Ikemba Newi in 1982. Malami should know that the Igbo Yoruba relation has given rise to several high profile intermarriages without bubbling grown with bubbling grown up children and grandchildren. More of the above sources of unity and inter ethnic solidarity was accentuated when the President General of Fanese Ndibu Worldwide Ambassador Professor George Obioza paid a courtesy visit to the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Sangwolu, in his Lagos office. The indigenous people of Biafra IPOP is mostly populated by the Igbo. The Ohane Zendibo Worldwide and the leader of IPOP, Mazin Namdekano, are united against the orchestrated marginalization of the Igbo in one Nigeria. For instance, the southeast of Nigeria has the least number of states compared to the other six geopolitical zones in the country. The least number of local government areas, the least number of seats in the Senate, the least number of seats in the House of Representatives, the least in the federal budget allocation, least in the distribution of constituency projects, zero repetition in the headship of the security architecture of Nigeria, zero minister in the grade A category of the ministries, unemployment to Igbo youth, and indeed obvious conspiracy against the Southeast in every sector of the Nigerian polity. The major roads passing through the South is namely the Enugu Onicha Road, Enugu Potakot Road, Otukpo Enugu Road, ETT, are the traps. In addition, the full Lani Hatsman realm about with AK-47 rifles ravage the farm of the Igbo rural dwellers, debauch their women, abduct their men, maim and kill, and no arrest is made by the relevant authorities. The point of divergence between the Ohanese and the Igbo and the IPOB is that while the former believes that the Igbo ingenuity will find full expression in a restructured Nigeria, the latter appears to be tired of the age-long marginalization of the Igbo in a country they have sacrificed so much to build. In other words, the IPOB are our children and we owe them undiluted love, duty and responsibility. So we have had it raw. We have had it from the horse's mouth, from the Ohanese group themselves, that in all, everything that's the same is that there should be equity, fairness, and justice. On this note, we have come to the end of the news. We say thank you for tuning in to listen. Until I come your way next time, enjoy the rest of the day.